All right. It's going to be a juicy one with my man Matisse today. Yes, sir. Appreciate gonna, that. Um, having, having me on. Didn't mean to cut you off, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great great start. But no, nah, so uh, we're going to be going over specifically with Matisse on um, him scaling his offer that he previously ran with specifically outbound acquisition and then kind of the process of that, kind of what he did um, and why he likes outbound over other acquisition methods as opposed to like paid ads, personal branding and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, man, if you just want to kind of introduce yourself and talk about, uh, yeah, just what you've done and kind of what offer you were running and we'll go from there. Yeah, so well, I mean, specifically to talk about the the offer where I used to outbound primarily, uh, just to kind of get started. Like it was a sales placement offer, so it was helping the business owners with sales placement needs. I needed reps, pretty simply. So uh, big yeah, big, big. Well, now it's, it's becoming more and more of a need, especially uh, in the high ticket space, kind of just being fragmented. But overall, uh, I ran that agency. Only with yeah DM setters, uh, they were on a salary base. Um, they were producing. I was able to scale up to one point ten DM setters. Um, so yeah, I really I really scaled it up like to the max that that I could at the time, um, whilst keeping like the margins good, decent. And then yeah. And then speaking of the scalability, so a lot of people have the misconception that outbound is not scalable. And I try to tell people, it's like, once you get it to work with one, you just start adding more DM setters and it just kind of yeah. stops there. Yeah. Like you, you, you start with one and then you add two, you add two, you add four, you add four, you add, you add six. Right. Right. Eight, and boom. Keep yeah. adding. And then from me scaling my offer with outbound in the B2C space for a coaching offer, to 66k per month what i found best was was starting with um three to five dm setters because some will be decent some will do other things than the other ones and then it'll kind of over time curate a good strategy and script because this person might say this and it's working better than the other dm setter saying this so it kind of feeds each other's um script capabilities and kind of betters the outbound having more than just starting out with one what do you yeah. what are your thoughts on that no, i agree i agree yeah yeah and uh, with the uh, specifically, you're saying your return uh, on your investment of paying the DM setters the salary, what kind of like, how much were you charging? And then obviously you're paying like 500 bucks a month per uh, DM setter. So what, what were your, your return on that? What's going on guys? Just a quick little pause in the interview. If you guys want us to build your DM setter team, if you're wanting to get outbound into your business, we have offices where there's no upfront cost to help you build the system. And literally we work on a pay per results basis. All you have to do is pay for the DM setter salary. And so if you're willing to do that, go to the description, book a call to speak with me or my team and we'll, uh, we'll work with you if uh, we think you're a good fit and we like your offer, get your clients good results and and all that jazz. But so that being said, let's get back into it. I mean, per VA, I was at least um, like getting a free X return on cash. Like, um, so I, if I if I'd spend five hundred bucks, I'd be making at least three thousand. Nice. Yeah, and I mean, and you said you got up to ten with that. So you're getting what was that about like thirty k a month? The peak I was at fifty. You guys, sorry, sorry, nice. just came. Hey, yeah, you're good. You're good. <laughs> a lot of people get scared to pay salary for the DM setters as well. Like everyone just naturally wants to do commission only. What yeah, are your I mean, that's the thing. Like, yeah, these are uh, these are not necessarily U.S. people, and even if they were U.S. kind of like reps, like you want them to stick. Otherwise, like it, it setter closing is the highest one of the highest churn industry. Yeah, in terms of just recruitment. Yeah, and it's, but. Right on the right on the closing, uh, the lowest is setting like commission based setting. Exactly. The, the, like, you don't want to be you don't want to be like turning through reps. You want some stability in your business. So pay pay bring some stability to the exactly. The, the sales, you know, and that's that's the same thing I tell everybody. I'm like, you you they're not going to make that much on the outbound role. So like, if they don't have that consistent income on top of giving a little small commission, if you'd like, like they're not going to stick. You're just going to train them for a week. They're going to quit because they don't get a sale their first week. People's, they need money quick. And so you're just going to keep constantly training people and not even getting results. And you know, when you're only paying 500 bucks a month for a DM setter, I mean, 
one sale a month, you're profiting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and especially if you have five DM setters and you're doing 500 a month leads, that's $2,500. Literally just for you, for example, one sale, you're already making more just to, to pay all of their salaries off one of them bringing you one sale. So yeah. everything after that is just, they're basically working for free and it's profit. Um, Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. And uh, can you talk more about kind of the strategy you use to them? Because I know you're, you're, we're doing Facebook groups and all that for your office specifically. Cause yeah, at the time, yeah, right here. Like, yeah, I mean, at, at the time, uh, I'm not into, uh, at the time, what I used was, yeah, just outbound in uh, Facebook groups specifically. And that worked really well. I mean, still works to this day. Just blow, blow Facebook up, up in all the different groups. That was yeah. really so and the more people do that, the more the more messages, the more responses you're gonna get, the more responses, the more book calls, the more book calls, the more closes. So it was just a way of filling up calendars very cheap. And you've also done ads before, correct? Yeah. For different offers. What what are what are your what are the pros and cons of like outbound versus ads or outbound, like you're always gonna spend less on outbound. Like it just pure outbound, like pure putting the offer in front of someone can get decent results. Uh, yeah. But it's better with his niche groups already like, on yeah, Facebook. You can do indirect or direct outbound, whether you're leading with the offer or you're just kind of conversating and then naturally ascending them into getting on a sales call. Um, yeah, I was, I was more direct to offer and it makes sense if like that offer is yeah. Yeah, like B2B Honestly. or like within a group, certain group where it makes sense like to, to be pitching that offer. You yeah. like those type of people hang around in these types of groups. You want to message those types of people. Yeah. And then, so obviously with, um, as you know, we manage the DM setters. What are your thoughts on like proper management and scripts? Because especially because, you know, these DM setters are overseas, they kind of really need good training and dialed in scripts so they can sound like they're US based and actually perform well and book a bunch of appointments. But what are your yeah, thoughts? Like, I mean, the, the main thing is most of my VAs look like they were from the US, you know, like most of my DM setters, like had a profile that looked like they were from the US even though they weren't make sure that they they look presentable and people would actually respond it's just like yourself you know you look at a, a dm if yep. it's not uh like up to the standard that you feel like oh this guy's worth my time like you're yeah. not gonna respond so 100 percent. and so just optimizing the accounts for yeah, just not optimizing the account yeah exactly. yeah and um i know a lot of people are worried about like if the DM setter is not in the US, they might push away clients. Well, no. one, if you optimize the account and two, you have a good script and strategy, then like that, they look over that because the scripts are very US based and people won't question their um, <laughs> where they're located. Yeah, and, and it's a, it's a, like you can add followers, you can add credibility, you can like the background can be changed, the profile picture can be better, like a lot of things that you can do. Yeah, yeah. And would you recommend the audience if they're below 50K per month, starting with ads, outbound, or like personal brand or what? Because like I personally like outbound because you don't have to build a personal brand and you don't have to necessarily show your face because you could just have a DM setter, you know, just full on setting uh, and do, be, being an offer based. But what do you think on that? I mean, per, like those take time. Ads, I, I mean, ads could be pretty instant, but you could also lose pretty instant as well. Yeah, that costs, uh, yeah. yeah like, <laughs> Like, especially like we're talking about minimal capital, you know, like minimal capital. Yeah. Go straight into, go straight into DMs, you know, like you can saw it yourself. Yeah. But all this is the best way to do is just like have a, have a DM setter. Yeah. And scale it up hundred percent. Yeah. With ads. I mean, I, I have friends who do ads very well and like they'll spend like 20 to 40 K just to validate an offers via sell. <laughs> and stuff like that. And like, if you're below 50K per month, I mean, you don't have 40K to spend and validate an offer through paid acquisition. So, no, like, I mean, you want to work your way up to that. Like, that's obviously the the, the, yeah. the goal. But yep. yeah, if, you, if, you ain't, if you ain't at that level yet, like where you can spend and make it profitable, like you have an offer that you can close, like, yeah, don't, don't waste your time. Yeah. And what I tell everybody is like, even if you're running ads, like I'm running ads and I'm doing outbound. Like, so for example, I'm not relying on one additional uh, or one revenue stream. So if my ad account gets banned or my account gets banned, I have outbound generating me revenue on the back end without even needing me. So that's kind of what I recommend for everybody. One, especially to start getting revenue in a predictable way and then move into ads, but keep the outbound going. I recommend both at the end of the day, but I do, I do definitely love outbound. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, you want to wrap up? I, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you're busy. <laughs> no, but I no, appreciate it, mate. No, hopefully uh, that gives you guys kind of some clarity. I mean, for me, uh, outbound is definitely one of the strategies like in the tool belt to, to kind of build a, a business for sure. It's it's good wherever you're starting or you're already established and you just want to add. Yeah. Uh, it works especially well if you're already established. So yeah, mm -hmm. I would just say give it a try and then uh, who better to... And do it for you than Brendan, you know? Yes, sir. <laughs> and then one more thing, because I know, like, I know we already touched up on this, but, like, the salary to the DM setters, like, so many people just don't think, they think they can get away with doing commission only. Yeah. Instead of me just saying why that doesn't work, do you want to kind of tell them? So, yeah, so I mean, here's the thing. You, you, you can, it works, you know? It can work. It's just, like, you're going to need five, well, you're going to need ten times more people on the team. Like, more, be prepared to lose like pretty much all your team every week you know yeah, until they'll just quit within a week yep. yeah like, <laughs> and even if like until one guy makes it uh and when the guy does make it like he's going to leave onto a better offer anyway so like you're competing because you're not just competing for um yeah for the for the money i mean they're not just there for the money though they they are um but it's like you're competing against other offers yeah like well, other things they could be doing yeah like the five job online closing role like of the set of roles so like there's a ton of competition in the in the setting yeah. role because i i tried did you crash commission as well when you first because i did as well i thought i could get away with doing commission only and then i realized yeah, i did but like you want to you want to bring stability to yourself you know so yeah. that's why it's better to pay a little more or like pay that's what pay makes it predictable more. as well yeah, yeah like yeah. They, they stick and like also like if, if you do commission only, they just quit week one, get you no results. You don't give them like that three month effect where if you have like a DM setter on sour and they stay for three months, they get really good on your specific offer and they start crushing it for you. But yeah, just and, and you also get better yourself, you know, like at to training the team, but it's hard to train, know the team if they get, you get rid of them every week, you know? So. Yeah. Hundred percent, and then with clients with us, obviously, you know, I mean, we manage the entire DM setters, so they don't even have to lift a finger. So, yeah, like, yeah, that's the best way. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, man. Well, I appreciate your time. I'll wrap it up right here. Uh, it's been my man Matisse. Yes, sir. <laughs> Looking oh, fresh man. as always. <laughs> oh, gee. Yes, sir. All right, man. Appreciate you.